In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use symbols in drama. Symbols are really useful. Why? Because they allow you to display scenes inside other scenes, and that's just great for making super advanced prototypes. This document has several scenes, but for now, let's just focus on these two, which represent a switch in two states, off and on. Let's say I want to use one of these two scenes as a symbol on this other scene. To do that, I first click the Symbol tool here in the toolbar. Drama then shows me a list of all the scenes usable as symbols in my document. From this list, I'll pick the On scene and place as a new symbol here. And I'll do that twice more. OK, now let's look at how this works in the simulator. And as you can see, the switches remain interactive even when enclosed inside symbols. In fact, they're totally independent of each other, which would be very, very difficult to achieve without symbols. Let me show you another cool thing. These symbols still depend on their original scenes. So when I change something in the original scene, like the corner radius of this track layer here, you can see that the corner radius also changes in all linked symbols. Let's now set that corner radius back to 30, because it looks better that way. Now, let me show you how the inspector for this symbol looks. OK, first, let's select the symbol. In the inspector, you'll find a symbol section. Inside, there's a pop-up button that enables switching to a different scene, like this. Let's talk about this button scene. Its two layers together represent a button. One layer is used to draw background, while the other displays text. Both layers are configured in the inspector's resizing constraints section to resize along with their enclosing scene. That means when I select and resize the scene, the button also resizes, and the text remains centered. Let's see what happens when I use this button as a symbol on other scene. I'll put the button here and add another here. OK. Now, when I resize these button symbols, you can see that the resizing constraints are still applied. That works just fine, but I also want to use different titles for these buttons and maybe different background colors too. How can we do that? Simply by adding parameters to scenes. First, I'll select the button scene. The scenes inspector has a symbol parameters section with an add button, which I'll click to add a new parameter. From the menu, I'll first pick the title layer, followed by its text attribute. After that, a new parameter is added here. Here's how to read this. The scene has a parameter named text linked to a layer named title to an attribute named text. I can change the parameter's name to button title simply by rewriting the name like so. Now, let's add another parameter, this time for the button's background. I could do that by clicking on this Add button again, but let's take a better route. I'll simply select the Button layer here, and from the contextual menu, pick Add Parameter, and then Fill Color. And now when I select the scene, you can see that another parameter has appeared here called Fill Color. Hmm, let's change that to simply Color. And that's done. Now let's look at how we can actually use these parameters. First, I'll select a symbol that uses the button scene. Here in the inspector is the Symbols Parameters section, which includes all the parameters we added to the button scene. And you can change their values. So here is the button title parameter, which I'll change from Hello to something like OK. And the second symbol I'll modify, Button Title, to Cancel. And let's change the color just like this. Great. Parameters are a really powerful feature. When you have large documents with tons of scenes and symbols, things can get quite complicated quite quickly. For example, in the symbol list here, I also have this other scene available as a symbol, but I'm never going to need that. So I can simply fix that by selecting Other Scene and unchecking the Usable as Symbol checkbox in the inspector, like this. And now when we look at the symbol list again, the other scene is no longer available. Let's now imagine you've got heaps of scenes here, not just switch and button, but tens of other scenes that can potentially be used as symbols. 
Wouldn't it be super great if instead of this flat list, they were organized into an easy-to-manage hierarchy? Well, that's pretty easy. You simply have to name your scenes in a certain way. For example, let's rename this off scene to controls.switch.off. Now the scene connected to the off scene has been automatically renamed to controls.switch.on. And I'll rename this button scene to controls.button. Let's return to the symbol menu. Now there is a submenu called controls, which includes the button scene and also another switch submenu with on and off buttons. By simply adding dots, we've improved the organization of symbols so it's much easier to find the one you need. And by the way, you can also use the slash character instead of the dot character for the same purpose. In the next part of this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to create more advanced prototypes with symbol commands and symbol notifications. Thanks for watching.